When we were little, my cop dad used to pick me and my twin sister Morgan up from school after work. And one day, there was this one event that impacted my life forever. All units, we have a report of a large snake on a playground near Elm Street Elementary. Children are trapped and scared. Proceed with caution. Sweethearts, dad's gonna take care of something. Buckle up. Please, stay calm. We'll handle this. Morgan, honey, I need your help in securing the snake. Can you grab that pole and crate from the maintenance shed? No way! It looks gross, and I'm scared! Typical Morgan. She only cared about her skin. But when I saw how scared everyone looked, it unlocked something in me. I wanted to be brave, just like Dad. I'll do it, Dad. Now, Maddie, I need you to use that long pole and guide the snake into here. Dad and I saved the day, and I realized that I wanted to be a cop just like him and save more lives. But having an ex-model for a mom made me feel like it wasn't possible. Come, come, girls. We have a big audition to go to. As you can see, Mom wanted Morgan and I to be models, but this was very difficult for me. Dresses, makeup, heels, all of it. I was the resident tomboy, but Morgan? She was just like Mom. Perfect. And so obsessed with winning. I win! Hey, you couldn't even help me! Of course. She quickly became Mom's perfect little angel, and I tried my best to fit in with them, but Mom always made me feel like I wasn't doing enough. Those weren't the heels I asked you to put on. They aren't? You always forget everything. Okay, maybe I really wasn't doing enough and compared to Perfect Morgan, I was the forgetful scatterbrain. But honestly, this wasn't where my heart was. This was. <gasps> easy, easy. I loved training at the defense club with my dad every week when I had the chance to hang out with his cop friends and learn to kick some serious butt. You know how to throw a punch, kid? You bet. You better watch out. She might take your job one day. I'll agree to that, if she can beat my son. Suddenly, this cute boy walked in, and I swear I lost all brain function for a second. His name was Fred, and I'd seen him around before with his headphones on, but I was too chicken <laughs> to make a move. Madison here was just bragging about how she can take you down. I don't fight girls. I couldn't believe the words coming out of the butt face's mouth. Just say you're scared. Well... Since you're asking for it. Fred and I squared each other in an intense battle. He was really tough to beat, but at the end, I won. <sighs> not bad. You're good, but not that good. For just five seconds anyways, because before I knew it, he had me under him, and the way he stared at me filled my stomach with butterflies. I told you. From there on, Fred and I became the best of friends. He didn't care about how scattered I looked and always treated me like one of the guys. And lucky for me, we both had cop dads, which made us partners. Not professionally, of course. One day, we were leaving the defense club when we found flyers everywhere. Become the next international STA model. Join top models in our modeling house. Sounds pretty serious. I bet mom is somewhere, getting Morgan prepared for this. And I was right. Mom had Morgan practicing nearly every week with a little rest. Jeez, it's nearly midnight. This is what real models go through. And you wouldn't know anything about it because you prefer to act like a boy. The next day at the club, Fred and I overheard dad and his partners discussing a girl connected to the same contest Morgan was gearing up for. She said someone tied to the modeling house tried to kidnap her. The modeling house? Yeah. What do they even want with her? They want to win, and they don't want her in it. Poor girl refused to give her more info because of fear. That's something we have to look into. The chief already gave the go-ahead to sneak an undercover agent in, but how? They're all teens in there. This was the moment I'd waited for my whole life. I can be your undercover agent. No. Listen, Dad. I'm the same age as most of the girls there. I have some experience, and Morgan might need me. I'm your best. Dad pulled me to the side before I could finish. Honey, you're too young for this, and it's dangerous. But, Dad... Morgan being there is already bad enough, and your mom won't take her out. You in there will only make my job harder. No matter how hard I tried to convince my dad, he wouldn't listen. So guess what I did? I took matters into my own hands. There, all done. A recommendation letter from a high-ranking fashion icon to get you into the contest. Camelia Feliz. Fancy name. She lives in Paris. There's no chances of you guys bumping into each other. Awesome. Fred and I sent in my application and got it accepted within two days. I quickly packed my things for the contest while Mom and Morgan were already out on their way and Dad was at work. Nobody noticed what I was up to. Phew. Wait, you're not going like that, right? Like what? Oh my god, I totally forgot. The makeup, the dress. You have to help me. Ugh, you're a lost cause. Ouch! Fine, just come with me. Fred took me to his aunt who owned a salon downtown. Hey there, honey. And you, oh my god, did you get thrown out a window? About that, 
could you give her a makeover? She has a modeling contest. Poor girl. Of course I can. She set right to work, and it was the most painful one hour of my life. But at the end, I came out looking really gorgeous. You look so beautiful. He stared at me like he was mesmerized. That made my cheeks redden. Thanks, I guess. Fred and I took an Uber to the modeling house, and I took out some mics I'd stolen from my dad. Here, we can talk with these, since phones aren't allowed. Thanks. <sighs> All right, wish me luck. And when I walked into the house, Morgan saw me, and she looked mad. What do you think you're doing here? Modeling? What else? You hate modeling. Maybe I saw the light. Before we could continue, this supervisor walked in. Girls, please follow me to your rooms. We were shown into our rooms, and staying just a day with these models made me realize how fitting in wasn't easy. I felt like an imposter. Oh, love, I don't think you belong here. But I didn't let any of that get to me. I was here on a mission, so I kept my eyes open and my ears sharp for anything. For a few days, nothing interesting happened. Until the swimsuit competition. I was freaking out when I saw how small the swimwear were. Can you believe? They want us to dress in swimsuits. Oh, come on. It can't be that bad. You work out every day and you're pretty hot. Um, sorry, sir. I didn't mean it. Who's that? Madison, your dad is here. Hey, honey. Listen, Fred told me everything, and I just need you to know we're both here for you. You aren't angry? I was, but I realized that you're smart, and you can do this. What about mom? She's not happy about it, but she'll come around. I love you so much, dad. After the call, I finally grew some courage and put on the swimsuit. Little did I know how much of a disaster the competition was about to be. Ah! Uh, what's happening? In the darkness, I could feel something dripping on me. When the lights came on, we were all covered in paint. Everywhere was in total chaos, but I was quick to notice that Morgan was missing. No, no, no. I wasn't gonna let my sister be a missing girl in the news. I left the stage and searched around for her, and finally found her alone in her room. Oh, there you are. I was worried when I didn't see you on stage. Didn't realize I needed your permission to change out of my paint-stained bikini. Why do you have to be so mean all the time? Because it's fun? At least, I was glad to know that Morgan was okay, even if she was being a witch. Later, I went back to the stage to see if I could find anything on the saboteur when I bumped into Fred backstage. Jeez, you look like, uh, uh, you look really pretty, Madison. Even with the paint? Yeah. Wait, was he blushing? I was pretty sure I was blushing too. I could feel that Fred had a crush on me, but it felt too early to ask. So, um, wanted to check on how you were. Your dad is pretty concerned too. I'm okay. Just frustrated that I have no leads on the person behind everything. You're smart. I'm sure you'll find something. After talking for a while, Fred and I went our separate ways, and the next day, the supervisor talked to us about the sabotage. Girls, I'm sorry about what happened yesterday. The cops have assured us that they're investigating, and nothing like this will happen again. Yeah, right. At least, her speech lowered the tension in the house. But in the next few days, I spent my time conducting a mini investigation around the house. And one night, I found a shadow in the dressing room with a pair of scissors, about to snip some dresses. But they noticed me and bolted, so I gave chase, hurtling through the halls until we reached the kitchen, where I caught them. I turned on my flashlight and was shocked to find my sister staring at me. Morgan, you're the saboteur. Great observation, Sherlock. M but why? Why do you think? I have a reputation to maintain. You're doing all these just to win? Wait, were you responsible for that girl who almost got kidnapped too? It's none of your business. You better talk, or I'll report you to the supervisor. Go ahead, you don't have any proof. Now please get off. Finding out that Morgan was the saboteur was the worst highlight of my night, so I spoke to Fred. Do you think we should tell your dad? Not yet. I can't dump something like that on him yet. It'll be devastating. I agree. So, what should we do? I'll have to find dirt on Morgan. The next day was the model's talent show, and I was so distracted by last night that I hadn't even prepared for it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we welcome the next presenter, Madison, up on stage. Hi, everyone. My talent is, um, singing. I sang a lot in middle school. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily. Well, that was embarrassing. But after my turn, I saw that the models were distracted, so I crept back to the house and snooped around Morgan's room. I found a box filled with receipts for hairpins, sonic devices, a remote, and then the actual stuff. 
Is this the sonic device? I'd better be sure. Maybe this remote controls it. Ow! Gosh, what was Morgan planning to do with all these? I was still trying to figure it out when I heard some loud noise in the distance and quickly put our things back together and slipped out of the room before anyone could see me. In the next few days, it was already the final modeling contest, and I could tell that Morgan was up to something with the way she was acting. Backstage, she was gifting a few girls the hairpins. Just a little good luck charm from me to you, Chloe. Aw, it's so beautiful. Thanks, Morgan. When no one was watching, I slipped the hairpin from one of the model's hair and looked at it. That was when I saw it. A little sonic device taped carefully to it. Before I could warn everyone, we were all filing onto the stage to listen to the host announce the winner of the contest. I couldn't do anything without interrupting the event, so I spoke to Fred. Fred, she implanted sonic devices on the contestants. Code Red. Your dad and I will be backstage soon. Fred and Dad were taking their time, and Madison could press the remote at any time. I had to do something. I started to approach the stage, but suddenly, two men showed up behind me and grabbed me away from the stage to the backstage. Hey! Leave me alone! So, you're the kid who used my name to lie! Who are you? Really? Madison, this is Mrs. Camilla Feliz, the woman in your recommendation letter. I invited her here, and apparently, she doesn't know you. Great. Just great. I'd totally forgotten about the recommendation letter. Listen, I'm sorry, but I can explain. Please, take the little criminal away. Her men took me away and kept me with them backstage. But luckily, Fred and Dad came to my help. What's going on here? None of your business, kid. That's my daughter you've got there, and I'm a cop. I could arrest you for holding her against her will. The men let me go and I hurried back to the stage. Morgan was holding the remote control and standing with the two models at the front who were the final contestants. The winner was about to be announced, but I had to act fast. I lunged onto the stage and tried to grab the hairpins from the girl's hair. Ah! What are you doing, you creep? But they thought I was attacking them. I went for Morgan next and pushed the remote control from her hands. When she tried to pick it up, Dad showed up and arrested her. The entire event got canceled. I'm so sorry. I only wanted to win and impress everyone, especially mom. Oh, honey, I realize that I must have put a lot of pressure on you, but you didn't have to do this. I still can't believe you had a hand in almost kidnapping that girl. I only threatened her. I swear. Nothing else. That doesn't make it any better. No wonder she refused to say anything. She knew that I was your dad. Please. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. The police took her away, and then Fred appeared beside me. I'm sorry about her. She'll learn her lesson. Dad says she'll get lesser punishment because she's a minor. That's a good thing. So, I've been, um, meaning to ask you out on a date. Do you like me, Fred? Because if you do, I do too. Really? I drew Fred in for a kiss, and kissing him felt like the best feeling ever. Until someone interrupted us. Um, I hope I'm not interrupting much. You know, girl. I thought you were a fraud, but you proved me wrong tonight. For this, I am granting you a scholarship. Sometimes in life, being a hero doesn't mean putting on a cape. It can be as simple as doing the right thing and standing up for what you believe in. So let's all strive to be true to ourselves and not do anything criminal.